So certainly defining a human body as, you know, being limited to the surface of your skin, it's very, very useful, granted. It is very useful because then we can say you or you instead of you and you and, you know, we can do that. So it's a very useful way to, to, to describe, <laughs> uh, to describe our bodies. But if we let go for a moment of what's useful, it's useful to give this thing the name cup. It's very useful to call it a cup, right? And pretend like the cup is this cylindrical thing that right now contains a little bit of something called water. That's really a useful thing to do because then I can distinguish a cup from what it's sitting on, right? But if we go beyond usefulness and we go more towards truthfulness or reality, then the body clearly doesn't begin or end at the surface of the skin. A cup doesn't begin or end at the surface of the cup. Right? A gla the glass that this cup is made out of takes... Well, sand, silicone, high temperature, sun, wind, rain, we we'll go on and on. So basically, if we take anything, but we'll just start with our bodies. Our body, our true body, our actual real body, beyond the useful definition of our body, which is granted, it's useful. But if we went not just to useful definition, but something that's actually more true, more real, then the definition of our body doesn't end with our skin. Because the air we breathe, the water we consume, uh, the ground we walk on, these aren't just things we drink or walk on or breathe, as strange as it might sound, these are actually even more intimately things that we are. How do you know? Because if you remove any one of them, there is no body. It would never have come into being, ever. So really, what does it take for even a single body to exist. Well, it takes all of life. And not just life on the earth, but the earth itself doesn't exist without a cosmos. So what's our true body? Really? Where does it end? There is no human body without a cosmos, without an earth, without the sun and the rain and the wind and the clouds and all the other elements around us. And yet those don't fit in our useful description of a body. What I'm talking about isn't particularly useful in a sort of, you know, utilitarian way. But... It's more truthful. So even though for some of you, I'm sure some of you have heard me talk about this before, some of you it may be new, I understand that if it's new, like conceptually, it can still be like something in the mind still goes like, no, 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 no. But still, any, 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 anybody knows that you know, the body is with the skin, right? But that just shows how we've mistaken a useful description for truthful description. And perhaps it's no longer even that useful. Because when we, and what I mean by it, perhaps it's not that useful anymore, times change. And Nowadays, if we, when we keep viewing the body as just this thing that ends with the skin and we we 
do not recognize that it also includes all of life, then we start to treat all of life as if, as if it's all expendable. We start to think that this body, this is the thing that's important, and the, and the air, and the rain, and the water, and the clouds, and, and the beans of the earth, and everything, that those, 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 those can come and go. Those are expendable. But they're actually not, are they? If those go, we go. At least as human, as bodies. Yes, our realization shows us that we're transcendent of the world of form. There is something beyond the world of form. That's what a deep awakening shows us. Absolutely. It can even, from that perspective, the whole world of form can, can seem to be, seem to be, not that it is or isn't, but seem to be a kind of, a kind of illusion, something very much like a dream. But remember, these are also, these are also um, words and descriptions, and the reality is never the same as the description. So whether we call the world real or unreal, um, we're still a little too caught in the world of descriptions. But nonetheless, something about our true nature is transcendent of the world of form. There's no doubt about that. But for now, for this moment, and for some foreseeable moments to come, uh, this is the thing we're dealing with, this world of form. It's very helpful to realize in our own experience that there's something, our, 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 our essential nature, our true nature, is transcendent of the world of form. That's profound realization. But also, this whole world of apparent form is also an expression of that true nature. Whether we call it an illusion or not an illusion, a dream or not a, a dream, this right here, right now, wherever you may be, wherever you may be, no, whatever part of the world you may be in, whatever room you're in, that right there, the whole environment, all that form, that stuff, that's also an expression, let's say, an expression of the ultimate. The ultimate doesn't depend upon it, but nonetheless, it's an expression. And not only is it an expression, it's part of your true body. 